Hey guys, it's Blaze here and I'm back for a new tutorial video, but as you can see, we're in Photoshop, we're not in um, Game Maker or any other engine for that matter. And that's because for this one, I'm going to use it as a bit of a setup video, as a bit of a theory video for the next tutorial that I'm making, uh, which is actually an extension of my combos tutorial. So let's get into it. You can see here that the topic of this video is actually logic maps for games. Now. I know that a lot of you are probably thinking, the hell's a logic map? Well, a logic map is, well, it's a way to get your logic in control. So check your logic, right? So what I mean by that is that you check your logic. Whoops, I forgot how to spell for a second. Um, basically, you know exactly what's going into the game. You know what it's going to look like. And you prevent something, You well, you don't prevent it, but you help prevent something called uh, feature creep. So let me just write that down, prevent feature creep. You guys can look this up yourself, but I will be making a video on feature creep uh, at some point. Um, I just wanna make sure that this video is more of a foundational video for my next programming tutorial that's coming up. So we're preventing feature creep. Now, real quick, feature creep is just about, it's, well, essentially a thing or an event where somebody says, wouldn't it be cool if the player or if the game had this, this, and this, and this, right? That's something you don't want to hear as a game developer, as a game designer, because that's essentially what this is, what feature creep is. You don't want that in your game. You don't want that in your production. Now, it also helps to visualize the game. Um, so if you're visualizing the game, I got to use my Australian spelling because I am from Australia. I'm not from the US or Canada. I'm from Australia. So there you go, guys. <laughs> A little bit of truth about me. Uh, so here we go. We're going to visualize the game. Visualize the game before you've even started writing code. Um, a lot of game developers, especially the ones that are self-taught or if you're just, you know, you're just starting out, you're starting to learn something, when it comes to visualizing the game, you kind of just start making the game. Games development starts right from the planning phase. Like, think about it like this, right? Your game is like, I don't know, your game is like cooking a five-star meal or, you know, building a car or something, right? You don't just start making it straight away. You got to do planning first. So this helps you... Um, visualize the game and it's actually a critical component of your game design document. I've seen so many students because I do also teach um, a games design component that uh, where I teach obviously but when um, when my students start making a game I don't see this right it's called the GDD or games design document. Uh, let me just write that out game design document. My writing isn't as fast as my mouth. <laughs> uh, game design, I'll just write doc, but you guys know that it's a document. Now it, it's critical, it's a critical component to it because well obviously when you're planning something um, you want to be able to see everything you know the game as a whole. If you don't see the game as a whole then uh, a lot there's a lot of messy things that are happening and that's just not that's not enough. Um, I've seen so many students who write a good game design and they come up to me during their final submissions with a, a less than uh, desirable game and that's something that you guys want to avoid. So let's have a look actually at what a game design or sorry a logic map looks like. Now if you've ever done game design or done a unit in game design this might look familiar and you might have uh, heard of it as a flowchart or something but we prefer to, uh, where I work, where I teach, uh, we prefer to call it a logic map just because it contains all the, I guess, the basic logic. So just the basic logic, really, of what the game is going to look like. So it's just basic logic. So we're not actually writing any code, you can see here, but we can see what the game is essentially made up of. So here is our generic um, game um, loop. And I'm just going to move it over so that everybody can see it better right in the middle. And you can start, you can see here that we start from the initialize phase and that goes to the main menu, which goes to the play game. 
um, session or the actual main game loop. So where all the ha where all the action happens, you know, you're fighting monsters or you're uh, fighting against player two or whatever. Um, that all happens in the main game loop. But you can see here that it comes back to the main menu. And the same thing goes for checking your stats or checking your achievements or whatever. And checking leaderboards, you know, it might be a racing game. It might be like, a, I don't know, like a, a racing game, a, like time attack or something, whatever. But uh, you've got leaderboards. And of course, you've got, you've got to have a component. You've got to have a, a part of your logic map that allows you to quit the game. Just because I've seen so many um, people, or so many game design documents that don't actually have a quit game part of their logic map. I know it sounds obvious, but really that... That needs to be there because, you know, I've, I've actually seen this a lot in uh, mobile games, especially they don't have a quit game component. And it's kind of like, well, where do we put it? Where can we quit the game from? It sounds obvious. Like the, the main argument is uh, it's obvious, but a lot of the times in production, it gets left out just because it's not in the logic map itself. So even though it seems benign and obvious to have a quick game component just chuck that in there just so that people know that you, you have got that in place let me check how long i've been talking to you guys six minutes already wow um so i'm about halfway through uh so let's move through this real quick if you're looking at a logic map say for a player and we're making an endless runner just pause the video here and have a look at the actual this is the, a, a complete logic map so just have a look at that uh, pause the video now and just have a look. Okay, now I'll, I'll keep going. So here we have the ready state and we're constantly running forward. When we get input, we can either roll, jump, or move, but we can't do anything else until we go back into that ready phase. Now, obviously you might wanna make some changes to the way you've designed your game, but I don't know, maybe if you jump, you can maybe move left and right, but you definitely can't roll if you're jumping. You know, these are all something, this is all something that you guys should take into account when you're designing your player. Like what states, this is, by the way, good for state machines, and I'll add that up into the, um, into the highlight, basically the end of this video. But all of these things rotate back to the ready phase, except for the death state. Obviously, you, you don't want to have to be, you don't want to be able to go back, but the death state will trigger another part of the game. Um, I don't know, that might go to like uh, like the game over menu, which is not a part of the player object, right? So this isolates all of the game logic to each of the major components of the game. So the player has an object, the death screen has an object, the main screen has its own thing, right? Each of these logic maps all contribute to the actual game as a whole. So here we go, <laughs> we're looking at this from here. If we have a look at this map here, um, actually, you know what? I'll just create a whole new layer for it because it's, it's gonna be a lot easier if I show you guys. So here you go, with that first logic map, we have the main menu. So in the grand scheme of things, the main menu is up here, right? Main menu, MM, uh, we'll just write menu. And then we've got the actual, you know, stuff that you can do from the main menu, but we're just gonna highlight this here, the actual play game component. So here we go, play game, play game. And you can draw your logic map out in this way too. This is a, another way that you can draw a logic map. It doesn't have to all look the same, like the same way, but um, this is just one of them. And then here we've got the player, the actual player object. Um, and that's really all it is. That, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're breaking things down, you know, to like a per component level, like, or rather per object level without writing code so you now know what the game looks like before you've actually started programming and that's exactly what you want you want to be able to see everything let me just check my time nine minutes okay you want to be able to see your whole game before you've actually started writing code because like i said right if we go back to the main screen <laughs> the first part um it checks your logic and it keeps it in check it makes sure that everything is you know in its you know desired spot where you need it to be so obviously it helps design it like i said earlier it helps design your state machines uh design finite state machines so that's fsm finite state machines 
So essentially, when you're thinking about it, you you have to do like not a lot less thinking, but there's less sort of brain power involved because you've already mapped it out. Like I said, making a game is like making a car or making a five star meal, right? You've you've got to start from the planning phase. So the planning phase is all about you know getting your ingredients, getting all your all your components ready, all your car parts ready, and then actually building the game is like you know cooking the meal or building the car, and then the final part of that is the selling bit, and that's obviously when you sell it to a customer or you put on the app store or you know something, you sell it to a dealer or something like that. You know that's the whole point of this uh, building a logic map, which is again part of the game design document, is a crucial part of games design. So hopefully with the next video that's coming up, again, like I said, it's more of a, uh, it's an actual programming video, but hopefully with that video plus this one, um, you can make the link between why logic maps are extremely important. And so, uh, well, you guys know this is the end of the video. Um, if you guys like the content, you want to see more videos like this. I don't think I've seen too many other people that do games development tutorials on YouTube make these sorts of videos, but if this is something that you want me to expand on, make longer videos, then you guys know what to do. Leave a suggestion in the comments section below. Don't forget to share this around because it's kind of, <laughs> kind of helps me out. Um, so sharing this video helps me heaps. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe guys. Thank you so much for your support and I hope to see you in the next video. That's all for me guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.